Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Christopher's. Uh, Especially welcome to St. Christopher's if you are visiting us. If you are visiting us, I am one of you. Um, I am also visiting us. Uh, My name is Heath Durrell. My day job is teaching at the University of Texas at Austin. I teach Hebrew Bible. Uh, Welcome. Uh, But uh, I also uh, serve as a priest on the weekends, and I'm thrilled to be joining you today. If you're visiting us and you're not me, there is a visitor card in the back of the pew in front of you. Uh, Please do fill it out so that we can get in touch with you. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity 
Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. <coughs> and God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and it was so god made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars god set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and god saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. 
God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We will read Psalm 8 in unison. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy in any venture. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should see him of? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You adore him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands, and you put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord our brother, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit, 
and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. special Sunday called Trinity Sunday. It is the only day of the whole year devoted not to the commemoration of an event in the life of Christ, like his birth on Christmas or his resurrection on Easter, or an event in the life of the church like Pentecost last Sunday, but rather this Sunday is devoted to a particular doctrine of the church the doctrine of the Trinity. You see, the doctrine of the Trinity is a complicated doctrine, one that is so difficult to wrap our heads around that the church has decided that priests, deacons, and other preachers all around the world should devote an entire Sunday every year to making sure that we are all on the same page with regard to the doctrine of the Trinity. As a reminder, the doctrine of the Trinity says that there is only one God. But that one God exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three are 100% God. They are not three pieces of God, as if God could be broken up into chunks. But each of the three is fully God. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But, and here comes the tricky part, the Father is not the Son, and the Father is not the Holy Spirit, and the Son is not the Father, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not either the Father or the Son. So we have three different persons who are all fully God, but none of whom are identical to one another, and this morning I am tasked with explaining how all of that works. <laughs> Father Ken has left me quite a project here. <laughs> And it's especially dangerous to try to explain the Trinity, because down through the history of the church, very smart people, smarter people than I am, have gotten it very, very wrong. One early Christian theologian, a fellow named Arius, I promise there won't be a test, Arius taught that God the Father was the real God. The Father's the real God, and Jesus, that is God the Son, was sort of a junior partner in the relationship. Arius taught that while God the Father has always existed, God the Son, Jesus, was created at some point, way back before time, before the world, but created nonetheless. God the Son, Arius taught, is older than the world, sure, but if you're looking for the real God, the divine head honcho, as it were, then that's God the Father. But the early church fathers were adamant that Arius was wrong. God the Son is every bit as much God as God the Father is. And for that matter, so is God the Holy Spirit. All three are co-eternal and co-equal persons of God, single and undivided substance, what we call the Godhead. It was so important for the early church that we get this correct that they wrote up a statement that we call the Nicene Creed, way back in the 300s. And here, around 1,700 years later, every single Sunday we recite the Nicene Creed immediately after the sermon to make sure that we get the Trinity right. And in a few minutes, when you recite the, 
the creed. Pay attention to how emphatic it is, repetitive it is, that God the Son is God just as much as God the Father is. God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made. All of that is a long and detailed way of saying Arius was wrong. <laughs> so when you say the creed in a few minutes, pay close attention, and you'll notice that the vast majority of it is explaining how the three persons of the Trinity relate to one another. Now, the extra tricky part comes when you try to say more than the creed does about exactly how all of this works. How can there be one God, but three persons who are all fully God, but who aren't somehow the same as one another? How can we wrap our head around a God that seems to defy basic mathematics? A God that demands that we believe that one plus one plus one equals one, not three. How do we explain that? Well, to be completely honest, I don't know. I'll be honest enough to say that I do not fully understand the nature of God. And I don't think anyone fully understands God's nature. At a certain point, we have to admit that our oversized monkey brains aren't big enough to comprehend or contain who God is and what God is. So I'm going to punt and not try to explain the Trinity here. Instead, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about why the Trinity matters. So, let's take a step back and talk about what makes for a healthy marriage. I promise I'm going to come back to the Trinity in a second. Just stay with me. If there's one thing that our society gets wrong, sometimes even more wrong than the doctrine of the Trinity, it's what makes for a healthy relationship. Often, society depicts two people in the truest and deepest form of romance, in a relationship in which they are alone, empty and broken and somehow incomplete as individuals until they meet one another. But together, those two people are finally whole and complete. Think about the big climactic scene in Jerry Maguire, where Tom Cruise tells Renee Zellweger, you complete me. Or the famous song, Can't Live If Living Is Without You. Or the Beach Boys, God Only Knows What I'd Be Without You. All of these are saying, I need you in order to be me. And don't get me wrong, I love Jerry Maguire, Show Me the Money, and the Beach Boys, and all the rest of it. And all of this language is probably intentionally over the top to express how deep love between two people can be. But if taken literally, the idea that you are broken and incomplete before another person comes along, that you need another person, that you absolutely cannot live without that other person, well, that is not the basis for a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship is between two people who are well-adjusted and complete all on their own. Neither expects the other to fix them or to provide them with a meaning for their existence. In a healthy relationship, each person could exist all on their own. But each person finds that life is better together. They don't need the other person, but they want the other person. They love each other so much that despite the difficulties, and there are many that come with any relationship, they choose each other rather than going in alone. Okay, so what does that free bit of marital counseling have to do with the Trinity? <laughs> you may remember that the Bible teaches us in 1 John 4, 8, if you want to double check me, that God is love. God's very essence is love. Without love, God could not exist as God, and without God, love could not exist as love. And we can have lots of emotions 
all on our own. I can be happy, or sad, or tired, or hungry, all by myself. I don't need anyone else for that. But love, real love, requires someone else. Love is an emotion that reaches out for another person. But God existed before the beginning of time, before the creation of the world, before anything else existed. And long before anything else existed, God existed all by God's self. But if God is love, and love requires more than one person, and God was all by God's self for an eternity before anything else was ever created, how does that work? Did God create the world because God needed someone else to love? so that God could be fully God, so that we could complete God. That's where the doctrine of the Trinity comes in. God is love because from all eternity, the relationship of the persons of the Trinity has been one of love. God the Father has always loved God the Son. And God the Father and the Son have always loved the Holy Spirit, and vice versa. Bound up in God's very being, as one God eternally existent in three persons, is a relationship of love. The triune God as love does not need anyone or anything else to be fully God. God could have gotten along just fine without anything else. God doesn't need any of us. So then, why are we here? That's actually the best part. We are here. All creation is here because God wants us. God freely chose to make us. Because although God doesn't need us, God thinks things are better with us here. God's love is so great that God wanted something else, someone else to share that love with. God looked around and said that the world would be a better place if there were someone else to share God's love with. God looked around and said that the world would be a better place with you in it to love. The doctrine of the Trinity says that God doesn't need us, but God wants us. Further, just like in any human relationship, God's relationship with us comes with costs and sacrifices. God knew from the beginning of time what it would cost God to create us. God saw in advance that we would reject God, that we would fall short, that we would sin. And God knew that bringing us back would require the ultimate sacrifice, the sacrifice of putting on human flesh and dying on the cross. God didn't need to do any of that. But God loved us so much that God chose to do it anyway, in the hope that we would love God back. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God, 
from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in sorrow, danger, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Andy, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and, and concerns of this congregation, especially Atia, Joy, Harry, Mike, Sally, Elizabeth, Bill, Aaron, Jean, Mark, Marcia, Mary, Ben, Joyce. Jeanette, Marlene, Linda, Deborah, Julie, Carlos, Amelia, Brian, Todd, Nana, Ronnie, MJ, Cynthia, Ron, Kale, Trinity, Richard, Nancy, Bishop Curry, and Daniel. Whom else are we praying for? <clears throat> Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Christ, have mercy. 
mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for the Sarah family, strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind with your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. EYC. EYC. Uh, I'm reading these. These are Lissa's words now. Calling all youth rising 6th through 12th grade for our very, very first of now EYC meeting, Episcopal Youth Community. Okay. Join Lissa for prayer, lunch games, and discuss future plans for the group at 12 o'clock parents on June the 4th and that is from those kids from grade 6 through seniors in high school that is today uh, men's breakfast coming up uh, well it hasn't happened yet so it's still okay <laughs> didn't say 12 a.m. all right anyway uh, the men's breakfast is coming up for June the 11th I, if you haven't gone Anyone can go to this thing, all right? They do not check credentials at the door, all right? Uh, you can go, and uh, I'm sure they would welcome more people coming instead of just the same old, same old. So drop by, have breakfast with them at gyms, and uh, meet a new group of people. They would very much like you to do that. Food donations for El Buen. This is summertime, and a lot of families are really struggling right now. Uh, their kids are not getting lunches at school necessarily. And so if you want to increase what it is you are bringing for El Buen during these summer months, it would be very deeply appreciated. So let's try and make that one of our weekly things to do if you can. Uh, children's volunteers. This always needs children's volunteers. And again, there's really not a whole lot of qualification for this except being uh, of a certain age and able, male and female can do this, it doesn't matter. Um, and then we have a new digital plate offering. Instead of just as saying a one-time offering, if you prefer to make your offering, uh, if you want to give one, then you can do it digi digitally if you wish. Uh, Heath, we are very happy you are with us today. We had a fun uh, nine o'clock uh, class over there. And again, all of you are invited to that. It's not just a select four or five every Sunday. And drop in and see if you like it every now and then. Lovely music today, guys.
It's the first Sunday of the month. I'm told that this is birthday Sunday. I'd like to open it to anniversary Sunday as well. Anyone would like prayers for birthdays or anniversaries this morning? Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Elizabeth. Right. And John? Edward. Edward. Look, I think they're no oh, good. Okay. Good. Anybody else have a birthday? <laughs> All right. <laughs> start over. I'm start over. All right. <laughs> oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. We grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Come into his courts of thanksgiving in your hearts, bring offering and sacrifice and praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and unity of being. And we celebrate the one equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in the words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood in the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Christopher and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Behold the love. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.